Good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Corin. I'm the chair of the board of trustees, and on behalf of the board, I want to welcome you to the 2011-2012 academic year. I graduated from Knox College in 1971, long before any of you were born, which means 44 years ago, I was sitting where you are today. In fact, I was about five rows down from the back and three seats in. I've been thinking about what I felt all those years ago when I sat where you do today. That day is as clear to me today as the sky was a beautiful blue in Galesburg this morning. I had two emotions that morning as I sat where you're sitting. Fear and joy. First, as to the fear. I was the very first person in my family to have the privilege of going to college. It was a tough time because my parents, who owned their own business, did not want me to be here. They wanted me to go and work in the business. I had younger siblings who ultimately followed me to college. But on this morning 44 years ago, I sat in this theater and I worried. Had I made the right decision? Were my student loans ultimately going to pay off? But most importantly, would I make the grade here with this fabulous faculty, a great student body, and the college's academic excellence? Or would I fail and go home? At the same time I had that fear, I also felt some joy. How wonderful it felt to be in such a place as this. I had four younger siblings and had spent many years of my life cooking meals and doing the diaper routine. I was happy for the first time in my life to have a place to come where I could read, be quiet, and think. I was thrilled. Those two emotions, fear and joy, motivated me to succeed here and later on in life as well. Those emotions caused me to fall in love with this place and it is why I come back and give back to this wonderful institution. As we begin this 2011-2012 academic year, my wish for each of you is to develop a great time and have great success have the same feelings that I had. May this academic year be one of learning, laughing, playing, giving, and really looking at things from the other person's perspective. Have a great year. Thank you very much. Now, we normally don't do this kind of thing, but this is a formal academic occasion, and so it is now my great pleasure to introduce to you the 19th president of Knox College, Dr. Teresa L. Amat. Dr. Amat has an impeccable academic and college administrative background. She has a BA in economics from Smith College and a PhD in economics from Boston College. She has held academic appointments at Wellesley, University of Massachusetts, Harvard Divinity School, Bucknell University, where she was the chair of the economics department, Gettysburg, Hobart, Hobart and William Smith Colleges, and now at Knox. Most recently, she served for six years as provost and dean of the faculty at Hobart and William Smith. She has helped that college raise a $200 million endowment. She's been active in campus space planning, She's intensified the, spur, the pursuit of external fundraising and government grants, particularly from foundations. When the college's search committee met Teresa, as great as her life's work and academic background were, 
It was other qualities she possessed that caused the committee to select her unanimously over all other candidates that we looked at. As we got to know her and started working with her, the following qualities emerged. She is a tireless and dynamic leader. She's very humble and engaging. She works by building consensus, but is not afraid to make the tough decision when it needs to be made. She has a very keen sense of social justice, commitment to her community and to the environment. Her commitment to the liberal arts runs deep as well. I think you will find as well that she likes people and has a great sense of humor. She's a person of both personal and professional integrity. So at this time, please join me in welcoming as Knox College's 19th president, Dr. Teresa L. Amat. I'm just going to begin. Thank you very much. I have been introduced to myself so often. I'm, I warn you that I am beginning to believe my own clips. It's very dangerous. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you, actually, for the welcome that you've extended to me since my arrival on a very hot day. And I'm relieved to see that the extreme weather, which seems to have dogged me from the beginnings of this search, is now finally lifting. So I'm happy about that, too. To the members of the faculty, the staff, the students of Knox College, our board chair, to our Galesburg neighbors joining us today, welcome. Every year, the Knox family grows larger as the previous year's graduates join the alumni community worldwide and the new students, class of 2015, my class, <laughs> and your transfer colleagues arrives on campus. We welcome you new students, especially today at this convocation. You are the product of a rigorous selection process. You bring impressive academic achievements to our classrooms, a global experience to our campus, a commitment to service that will enrich our community in years to come. We welcome new members of the faculty with backgrounds in a broad array of fields, they too selected by virtue of scholarly distinctions and by virtue of a deep commitment to undergraduate student success. And we welcome our new staff colleagues who bring expertise and fresh insights to the work of the many different offices of the college that support our central commitment to teaching and learning. We welcome returning students, faculty, and staff who make Knox such a special place, a jewel of American higher education. We look forward to hearing about your summer experiences, your research, your creative work, your internships, your jobs. We hope you had some fun along the way. Convocation allows us the opportunity at the start of the academic year to come together for the first time as a community students, faculty, staff, alumni, friends, and neighbors, and to commit ourselves to the work ahead. In this anniversary year, the 175th anniversary, we come together with a special focus, a focus I think appropriate to a college so steeped in history and so distinguished by its impact on American history. We join in this celebration, we celebrate the past, we stand on the threshold of the future. And we celebrate also the founding of our home, Galesburg. Since our history is inextricable from that of Galesburg, it was my great pleasure this past summer to visit the place in western New York where the idea that became Knox and Galesburg first emerged in the minds of our founders. They envisioned a town on the prairie, distinguished in that era by the presence of a college. Imagine that, an institution of higher learning at a time in the mid-19th century when a college degree was so rare that not even the future president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, could boast such an achievement. 
In recognition of this important anniversary, it is my great honor shortly to introduce the mayor of, Gal of Galesburg, Sal Garza, to this opening convocation. Mayor Garza is emblematic of the diverse citizenry that is one of Galesburg's greatest assets as a community. Born in Mexico, Sal came to, came to Galesburg as a young boy, grew up very quickly as a migrant worker. He has struggled and stretched just as Galesburg has. He served in the US Marines. He worked his way through college. He took a job at the local factory, Maytag, and worked his way through the ranks in the engineering division. When Maytag closed, Sal, like so many others, reinvented himself began a new career in economic development, helping the Galesburg area find sources of prosperity. And most recently, he has reinvented himself again, taking up the challenge of city governance. His story is a moving testament to the power of education, of perseverance, and of civic engagement. Please welcome the mayor of Galesburg, Salvador Garza. Thank you, everyone. It is a great honor to receive this invitation and to actually be able to exercise it. Um, Knox College, the community of Galesburg, has long shared this wonderful history. Great traditions that go back, I think, even before the college was founded, in terms of we should be working together. And that message holds true today. And on that note, I want to welcome, if you're, this is your first time to Galesburg, in terms of calling Galesburg your home, please know that you're most welcome in this community. And if you've been here for a spell, please, if you haven't been engaged, re-engage. Galesburg needs you, needs your skill sets, needs your experience. In essence, we offer open arms to anyone that wants to contribute any level of value to not only this community, but to this great organization that we call Knox College. On that note, um, two things that I'm going to do today, and very briefly, that is, I want to share with you that if you see me walking down the street, please grab me by the collar. Let me know what's going on in your immediate world, and in turn, I should be able to share with you what's going on in the broader community of Galesburg. I believe that that is a responsibility of every elected official. On that note, just moments before we actually marched down here, um, and just moments before um, I was introduced, I want to share with you two quick uh, opportunities and challenges. One is I was just notified that ADM, the ADM Corporation, has agreed to meet uh, with Galesburg here in Galesburg. We're going to continue to work through the challenge and hopefully convert that into new opportunities. As well as just moments before we started this, uh, this event, I was notified that we have another uh, green sustainable technology company that has agreed to come to the Galesburg community. So as opportunities, old opportunities cease and new opportunities begin, please know that we will always welcome your input, your participation, as well as just the affinity that develops over time when you are able to call a place that you reside a home and a true home. At this time, what I'd like to do is I'd like to read the proclamation that the City Council and myself uh, are very honored to be able to bestow on Knox College. And what I would ask is that your new president, if she would please join me up here as I read this proclamation. Whereas the Reverend George Washington Gale 
inspired a band of colonists to leave upstate New York and found in town in a college in Western Illinois in 1837. And whereas that town, Galesburg, and that college, Knox College, have forged a strong bonds with each other through their 175 years of shared history. And whereas Knox College was founded as an educational institution that would be accessible to students regardless of their financial means, their gender, or their race. The college spirit of equality motivated Abraham Lincoln to use the occasion of his fifth U.S. Senate debate with Stephen Douglas, held on the Knox campus in 1858, to denounce slavery on the moral terms for the first time. And whereas Knox College continues to be a community of scholar teachers and students working together, guided by the values of independent thought, personal integrity, and community responsibility. Whereas Knox College will observe the 175th anniversary of its founding during the 2011-2012 academic year. Now, therefore, I, Salvador Garza, Mayor of the good city of Galesburg, Illinois, do hereby proclaim February the 13th through the 18th of 2012 as Knox College Week in the city of Galesburg and recognition of the college's 175th anniversary and to pay tribute to the college past and ongoing contributions to the Galesburg community and beyond, dated this eighth day of September 2011.
as chief academic officer, um, I watch over the music department along with a bunch of other departments. And each year at this time, I get concerned. I get concerned because I don't understand how a choir can sound like that after just a few days back on campus without having imposed cruel circumstances, <laughs> sequestering in a windowless room, uh, I, I don't know what else, but uh, once again, I'm amazed. I didn't bring my hat to tip to you, but I, I tip my hat to Director Laura Lane, to our new accompanist, um, Megan Cluel, and especially to the members of the choir. Thank you very much. I have the uh, honor and the privilege of introducing new members of the Knox faculty, and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to introduce each member and ask them to stand and remain standing until everybody is standing, and then ask all of the rest of us to welcome them in unison. First, as visiting assistant professor of uh, English, we welcome Claire Falk. Claire has her bachelor's degree from Bowdoin College and an MA from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where she will shortly complete her dissertation. In the Department of Chemistry, we welcome back to her alma mater, Helen Hoyt, who's joining us as assistant professor, who left here with a BA and earned a PhD in chemistry at the University of California at Berkeley. In English, also helping us out this year, we welcome back to campus for a second, I think, uh, visit, Sherwood Kurali, who is a graduate of Knox, uh, who is visiting instructor of English and theater, and writing a writer in residence. We welcome Sherwood. We also welcome back to her English department as a visiting assistant professor, somebody helping us again for the second time this year, uh, Elizabeth Marzoni. As visiting assistant professor, uh, in addition to her bachelor's degree she holds from Knox, she holds a PhD from Western Michigan University. In the department of uh, psychology, we welcome Daniel J. Peterson as assistant professor. Dan has his bachelor's degree, his master's degree, and his PhD from the University of North Carolina and Chapel Hill, and he was the only person I met this summer who wasn't bothered by the humidity. <laughs> we welcome back, again helping us out in the Department of English, uh, we welcome back to her alma mater, Katya Reno, as visiting assistant professor. She holds an MFA from Texas State University in San Marcos. In our program of Asian studies, we welcome to campus as visiting assistant professor in Japanese, Orna Shaughnessy, who holds a BA from the University of California, Davis, her MA, and uh, is completing her PhD from the University of California at Berkeley. Helping us out this year in math, we welcome as visiting assistant professor Brent Soley, who has a bachelor's degree from the Colorado School of Mines and who recently completed his PhD from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. In the Department of Art, we welcome back to his alma mater, helping us out this year as visiting assistant professor, Tim Stedman, who has followed his undergraduate work at Knox, uh, receiving an MFA from the University of Illinois at Chicago. And in the Department of Educational Studies, we welcome as assistant professor, Jeremy Kelton Williams, who holds a BA from Emory and Henry College, and his uh, MED and his PhD from Texas A&M uh, University. In addition, we welcome our first exchange professor from the University of Flensburg in Germany, where we have a long-standing student exchange relationship. We decided to notch it up and see what we could do with faculty exchange. We welcome Monica Budi, 
who has her PhD from Kassel University in Germany. As the Glossberg Visiting Israeli Scholar this fall, we're happy to welcome Simon Lichtman, who has a bachelor's degree from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and his PhD from the University of Pennsylvania. And I also want to mention, uh, we welcome back to her alma mater uh, as a lecturer this term, Laura Rosine, who has, uh, will be contributing to our program in business and management. Her bachelor's degree is, of course, from Knox, and she has an MBA from Indiana University. Will you please join me in welcoming these new members of the faculty? It's also my pleasure to present the Philip Green Wright Lombard College Prizes for Distinguished Teaching. These prizes, established as, uh, by a gift to Knox College by Theodore Wright, Lombard College Class of 1915, memorialized Professor Philip Green Wright of that institution. Professor Wright was not only a teacher himself, but the father of three children, each of whom became a distinguished professor. The first Philip Green Wright Prize, established in 1966, is awarded each year to a member of the Knox faculty who is not tenured. Selected by the Faculty Personnel Committee, the sole criterion for selection is distinguished teaching. Now, when the Faculty Personnel Committee told me what their decision was for this year, uh, I wondered about it because they have three people they want to give this award to. And my first reaction, I will confess, was having trouble making a decision. Come on, you know. <laughs> then they gave me the names of the three people, and I went, okay. We have three winners, two of whom aren't here. Okay, they're away. Um, but they're being notified. Uh, perhaps not even as we speak, but shortly after. First, the University of Flensburg first Knox Exchange professor, <laughs> Sonja Klocke from the Department of Modern Languages in Germany. <laughs> Second, from the Department of Educational Studies, Stephen Schrott. <laughs> and third, finally, someone who is here, who's now going to have to be embarrassed to actually come up here and be recognized, from the Department of Anthropology and Sociology, Amy Singer. The second Philip Green Wright Lombard College Prize for Distinguished Teaching was inaugurated in 1981. This prize is awarded to a tenured member of the Knox College faculty, selected again by the Faculty Personnel Committee. As with the first prize, the sole criterion for the selection is distinguished teaching. I'm delighted to announce this year's recipient of the Philip Green Wright Lombard College Prize for Senior Faculty, Diana Cermak from Chemistry. <laughs> Occasionally have little private conversations where people say, this is why people in my family have been acting so strange the last couple of days. And I go, uh-huh, so thank you. Good morning. I'm Lori Haslam, Associate Dean of the College. And I'm here to highlight some particular student achievements this, this morning. Phi Beta Kappa, founded in 1776 during the American Revolution, is the nation's oldest and most widely known academic honors society. Knox College's chapter of Phi Beta Kappa was chartered in 1916, the first at an undergraduate liberal arts college in Illinois. 
Knox's Delta chapter is also the fourth oldest chapter in Illinois. Out of more than 3,000 colleges and universities in the U.S., fewer than 300 have Phi Beta Kappa chapters. Each spring, a group of high-achieving Knox seniors is elected to Phi Beta Kappa. At the same time, a very small number of the very highest achieving Knox juniors are elected. I would like this morning to recognize those students elected last year as juniors and now with us as Phi Beta Kappa members in their senior year and beyond. I'd like to ask each of you to stand as I call your name and ask the audience to applaud when all three are standing. Naomi Akaji, Stephanie Lashway, and Lauren Smith. The Elbridge Pierce Prize established in 1957 by Mr. Pierce, a former Knox trustee, is awarded each year to the senior who has made the greatest scholastic improvement since the end of the first year while maintaining at least a B average during the junior year. This year, the award is given to a student majoring in psychology, Ellen Ramsey. Ellen, can you please come forward? And the Faculty Scholarship Prize is awarded to a senior who by the end of the junior year has exhibited exceptional academic ability while participating significantly in extracurricular activities. The prize was established in 1922 by contributions the faculty made to an endowment campaign. The Faculty Scholarship Prize is the highest honor the faculty accords a student. This year, two students were judged equally meritorious. The co-winners of the Faculty Scholarship Prize are Naomi Akaji, majoring in chemistry, and Lauren Smith, majoring in psychology. Would you both please come forward to receive your prize? The Janet C. Hunter Fund was established in 2000 with contributions from friends and colleagues to honor the exemplary service of Janet C. Hunter, longtime director of financial aid, dean of enrollment, and vice president for enrollment and institutional planning at Knox College. And the Hunter Prizes are awarded annually to a member of the salaried staff and a member of the hourly staff in recognition of outstanding achievement and dedication to Knox College. I'd like to invite our board chair up to join with me as we award these important prizes to our staff. Now, those of you who are new are learning, as I did, that it's a secret. So there will be some pronoun confusion here, and I just want to check that out with the English department. Please understand. <laughs> so, so it's to avoid premature disclosure. <laughs> That English teacher I had in eighth grade scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> Today's recipient has been a dedicated employee of Knox College for 20 years. Sorry, this is the salaried staff recipient. This person has had a remarkable in impact on countless Knox students and employees, setting an example for us all with a positive attitude and an extraordinary work ethic. This year's recipient thinks how to serve Knox students almost 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. The care this recipient feels for students is reflected by the very large volume of calls, emails, texts, or Facebook messages from alumni that this person receives. 
This employee serves the community as well through many important gifts of time to our area youth sports. We're beginning to reveal the person. <laughs> and now, we are grateful for this person's latest role as Athletic Department Chair for the Faculty and Staff Campaign of Giving for the College. Please join me in congratulating Andy Gibbons. And he just said he wasn't dressed for this occasion, but I have to tell you, I think he's dressed absolutely perfectly for the occasion, <laughs> considering what he does for Knox and for our students. So I think you chose well this morning. The Hunter Prize Hourly Staff recipient. This recipient has an infectious positive attitude and a commitment to place team over individual. Following through on any request, this staff member accepts every challenge and has risen above difficult circumstances because of exceptional perseverance and dedication. No matter how hard the job, the employee has a kind smile and a cheerful greeting for everyone. This person takes great pride in this person's work for Knox. <laughs> and we take great pride in this person. This, re this recipient's exemplary work ethic is an inspiration to not only coworkers, but to every member of the Knox community whose lives this person has touched. At Knox, we like to say we're all teachers, and this employee leads and teaches by example. Please join me in congratulating Marie Scalf. I've said enough. Here she is again, <laughs> President Amat. Thanks, Jen. Um, as you all know, because you've heard it multiple times, it has been my great pleasure to begin my work at Knox during this 175th year. Because the story of Knox since 1837 has been a source of great inspiration to me. The boldness of our founding vision, the courage of our, of our early faculty and students and staff, the impact of our alumni and our college on the course of American history, the commitment of Knox boards and administrators, faculty and staff through tumultuous economic and social changes. All these have deepened my dedication to you and to our future. I invite you all to click on the 175th logo on our homepage, which will take you to the extraordinary anniversary site created here on campus over the summer so that you too can experience more vividly some of that history and some of that inspiration. The website joins the many books, articles, and artifacts that document our story, creating a very compelling narrative of connection between who we are today and how we came to be that way. Between who we are today and who we hope to be in the future. 
When our founders arrived in Illinois, this was truly open space and the journey was arduous. About 20 years later, the first of many trains arrived in Galesburg, linking this prairie town to other railroad towns and cities nationwide and eventually around the globe. Today, students still come by train, some of them, but more come by car and jet. And they come from 32 countries to this small city. When you travel outside the city limits or you rise in a plain above the landscape, you will see, as did our founders, 360 degrees of big sky, dwarfing the surrounding fields of corn and prairie. It is a very big sky. But as Emily Dickinson, one of our great American poets, wrote from the confines of her small Massachusetts town, the brain is wider than the sky. For put them side by side, the one the other will contain with ease, and you beside. The brain is wider than the sky. Our little campus, so small in comparison to the sky, to the great cities of the world is infinite because of the powers of imagination, of reason, and of comprehension that are nurtured and developed here. And this was the real gift of our founders, the gift of an idea, a vision, a college on the prairie invented in the brains of our founders, the life of the mind wider than the sky. Since then, there have been many others who have given us transformational gifts, too many to tell their stories here. But I want to single out one gift today because it tells a story about our recent past and about the 18th president of Nass College, Roger Taylor, who so graciously welcomed me as his successor last February. Many of you know the story of how Roger Taylor, distinguished lawyer, loyal alum, dedicated trustee, and board chair came out of retirement and with his wife Anne devoted a decade of their lives to strengthening Knox at a difficult time in its history. A decade normally dedicated to rest and relaxation and they gave those years wholly, fully, and without reservation to Knox. But there's more to the gift. In honor of the Taylors, over 500 Knox alumni, faculty, parents, and friends gave gifts totaling nearly one and a half million dollars to the Taylor Presidential Scholarship Fund. And that will in turn be a gift to first generation students who will study at Knox and in their turn give back to Knox. 500 of the most recent gifts in a chain of giving that goes back to that extraordinarily powerful idea 175 years ago. Thank you Roger and Anne, and thank you donors to the fund. Allow me to use this opportunity to outline four key initiative areas for the year ahead. First, in this anniversary year, we must honor our alumni, nearly 15,000 worldwide, by securing the funding to renovate the building that bears their collective name. I pledge to you my most vigorous efforts to make Alumni Hall a beautiful, functional, and transformative space for the offices and programs it will house working with our trustee Mark Klein of Galesburg and the task force he heads, we will make Alumni Hall a true gateway to Knox and to the world. And over the months to come, watch for announcements of the generous gifts now in the making that we have been working to secure. Second, we will work during this common anniversary year to deepen our commitment to Galesburg. We can and we must do more to bring Knox into the community and the community into Knox to model for our students the life of civic responsibility and engagement so needed in this country at this juncture. The Gale Scholars Program is a wonderful example of how Galesburg and Knox can thrive together, and I look forward to finding additional ways to extend the vision of our founders. Third, we will continue our important work on environmental sustainability. We have accomplished a great deal through the initiatives of the Sustainability Task Force and student green fees. Over the summer, thousands of red wiggler worms took up residence at Knox, 
They arrived before me to welcome me. <laughs> and they were already hard at work uh, camp composting campus food waste. In addition, as you know, the repairs to central water lines saved thousands of dollars, so, sorry, thousands of gallons of water and thousands of dollars. I look forward to new initiatives that spring from the creativity and innovation of everyone on campus in this area. And last, this year, we will engage continuing conversations, students, faculty, staff, trustees, on a strategic plan that will unite previous efforts in campus space planning with a commensurate level of endowment support so that we can continue to chart the course set by Roger Taylor for financial equilibrium. The course that must include support for our admissions and recruitment efforts, improvements in faculty and staff compensation, financial aid packages that enable student success, and student support services of high caliber and appropriate staffing. We all know that the efforts of the year ahead will be set against the backdrop of continuing economic challenges with their impact on students and their families as well as on philanthropic giving. But in order to provide access to a Knox education, we must exercise continued restraint while not dampening the spirit of innovation that characterizes the Knox faculty and staff. I am confident that we will navigate these challenging time, times while honoring the trust that students and their families have placed in us. Before closing today, I want to recognize every member of the Knox community. Every one of you is a teacher and a learner in this community dedicated for 175 years to lifelong learning. Every one of you has the opportunity and the responsibility to contribute to the Knox story. By your gifts of time, of talent, and of treasure, you make possible the knocks of tomorrow. 25 years from now, when another president comes to this podium to bring us all together at the start of our bicentennial year, knocks will be very different because of what you do in the intervening years. You will imagine and create the knocks of the future because the brain is bigger than the sky. The brain is bigger than the Knox of today. The life of the mind is infinite. Our founders, the people whose names grace our buildings and our professorships, the 50, 500 donors to the Taylor Fund, all of them inspired, animated, and dedicated to an idea, the power of the idea that is Knox. Let us all be inspired in the year ahead by our past, by the sacrifices and the gifts of those who came before us. Let us be empowered by the energy of learning, by the explosion of knowledge at this time in human history. Let us be transformed by the diversity of our community, intellectual, geographic, economic, perspectival. Let us be transformed by the potential for understanding and peace that beckons like a flame at the heart of diversity. May this be a wonderful year. I officially proclaim it begun. Before we sing our alma mater, I would ask each of you to join me in a moment of silence in memory of the tragic events that occurred 10 years ago on September 11, 2001. And even more importantly, for all those who have been lost to us and for those who continue to suffer because of those tragic events. Thank you.